uh, what we know so far, I mean, the, the important thing to know now from the last lecture is the difference between the short run and the long, the long run. So the short run, we have fixed inputs, or some inputs are fixed. In the long run, all inputs are variable, so you can change everything. Okay? So today, in this lecture, we will look at the short run. Next lecture, we'll look at the long run. So everything we say today is short run. Okay? So we will look at output and costs. Remember, we will look now at the short run, not the long run. Okay, so what we're going to learn today, we want to look at uh, the firm's short run product curves. So we'll look at the output first, and then we'll look at the short run cost curves. So then we'll look at the cost. So we'll start with the output, and then we'll look at the, the cost. So... Again, we, we already said this in the previous lecture. Um, in the short run, we have fixed inputs and variable inputs. So we have some, some inputs that we can't change. These are usually uh, uh, capital. And some other inputs that we can change. These are variables. So we can, these are usually uh, labor. So to increase output in the short run, if you have, if you can't change, uh, uh, capital, then the only the way to do this is to increase labor, so is to hire or to employ more uh, more workers. So there are three concepts to understand now. Just remember, we're talking about the output first. So we have total product, marginal product, and average product. Okay, so these. Three, explain the output in the short run. Total product, marginal product, average product. So, the total product, of course, that's the total output produced in a given period. So, that's how much we produce in a given period. The marginal product, remember, we have fixed inputs. Capital is fixed. We change only labor. So we can hire more or less uh, uh, workers, so we, we, that's the, that's the uh, input that we can change. So in that sense, then the marginal product of labor means the change in total product that results from one extra worker. So hiring one more worker, that is the marginal product of labor. So that's what they, their contribution to the total product. Again, this is their contribution of the extra or the additional worker to the total output. Of course, assuming that other factors are the same. So nothing change. Nothing else change. So we have only one, when we have one more worker, the contribution to the total output, that's his contribution to the total output. This is the, um, the uh, marginal uh, product. The average product is the total product divided by the number of labors or the, num uh, the quantity of labor employed. Okay? So let's see how, like an example, how to show this. So here we have zero labor. So let's assume we have four or five machines. So that's capital. This is something we, ca we cannot change in the short run. So the number of machines you have, that's your capital, we can't change. So we have zero labor, and we have these machines. So what do you expect the output to be? Just zero, okay? So we have zero labor, zero total product. When we hire one more worker here, so we have the first one here, how much is the contribution to the total output is four. So the total output is four. That's, that's the total amount of output. So that's the total product is four. And also the marginal is four because that's his contribution to the total. The total was zero. And then when we, we hired that person, we had now, we got four units. So it will be clear when we look at the second one. So if we hire one more than the second person now, in total, 
that's the total product. In total, we have 10 units. You see, that's 10 units. Okay, so these two together, they produce 10 units. The first one alone produced four. So what's the contribution of the second person? Six, exactly, and that is the marginal product. Okay, and that's what it means. That's the marginal product. Okay, so it's the change in the total product when you increase labor by one unit. So we increase labor from one to two, we increase labor by one unit, and then total product change from four to 10. So that marginal product for that extra or that additional worker, that the last one is six, it's 10 minus, minus four. That's the change in the total product. Okay, let's look at the third one. So the third one, when we hire the third one, now we have in total, so three of them together, they produce 13 units. But what is what about the marginal product of the third person? So two together produce 10. The third one, with the third one, they produce 13. So what is the contribution of the th uh, third one? Three. So that's the change of the total product. And that is the marginal product. Okay? So you see, that will show you the marginal product when you add one more. So from the sec between the second and the third, the marginal product is three. Between the first and the second, the marginal product is six. Between the third and the fourth, the marginal product is two. So it's the 15 minus 13. That's two. 16 minus 15, that's one. So this is the marginal product for the fifth. Okay, for worker number five. Okay, so now hopefully you understand the marginal product. What about the average product? Remember, the average product is the total product divided by the number of workers you have. So, if we have one worker, we had total product equal four. So, four divided by one is four. So, that's the average product. Okay? Ten divided by two, that's five. And, and so on. So 13 divided by 3, like 4.33, and, and, and so on. 15, uh, sorry, 13 divided by 3, 15 divided by 4, 16 divided by 5. This will give us the average product. So this is an average how much each one of those would produce or would contribute to the, um, to the total product. So, uh, so in average, we, look, we divide the total product by the number of workers. For the marginal, we look at the change in the total in the total product when we uh, increase the uh, labor by by one worker by only one. So we look at how much the last one we added or we we hired contributed to the total uh, total product. Okay, so is that clear? Okay, so these three concepts are very important to understand the output side. So as, as we said, we'll, we'll talk first of the output, and then we'll talk about the costs. But in, in both cases today, in this lecture, we talk about the short run. So remember, what does it mean when we say the short run for a firm? How do you know it's a short run? Exactly, there are fixed inputs, so that capital we can't change. That is, that's how we know this is, <laughs> that's how we know this is a short run. So capital, we cannot change capital in the short run. So what we're trying, to, you see, the example we give now, what we're talking about is labor. So when you increase one more worker, when you hire one more worker, so we're talking about things that we can not change, but we can't change capital. We take it as given. We're not changing capital. We can't do that in the short run. Okay? It's a decision that we can't make in the short run. If, we, if we're able to change capital, then that means we move to the long run, okay? So over the short run, as you see in this lecture, we'll talk about output in the short run and costs in the short run. And for output, we, we talk about three concepts. Total product, marginal product, average product, okay? So let's see how these change. So as you hire more labor, I've, you have more workers here, you see from zero to five. What happened to the total product? <coughs> it increases. 
You see that? So what happened to the marginal? It increases, initially increases, and then decreases. So it increased from 4 to 6, and decreases uh, as you, you add or you hire more, more workers. Okay? Just imagine if you have a machine that will uh, produce like the, in the best way if, they, if it has three workers. When you employ no workers, there's no output. There's no uh, production. When you have one, then the contribution will be, well, well compared to nothing, will be high. And then if you, if you add two, now we're moving closer to the th three. So that's the best uh, uh, thing to have with this, with this machine. Okay, then when we add the third one, you see the marginal, the contribution of the third one is, 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 is more. So marginal product is increasing. But then what would happen when we add the fourth one? The marginal, his contribution will be less. Okay, because as I said, they're not going to have the same access to that machine. Okay, so their contribution to the production will be less, definitely. Okay, there's no space for that person to, to use that machine. Or even that person would be distracting even others. So anyway, so what we, if I add four, why I'm just talking about th adding four, three, uh, sorry, four, five, six workers to the same machine, why don't I just simply buy another machine for the other three workers? Please. Exactly, <laughs> this short run. So we can't have another machine. You remember? So if we could do that, thank you. <laughs> if we could do that, so that means we're not in the short run. We're on the long run. So the condition I'm talking about now, these conditions are in the short run. That's why I'm saying, well, you should have three. That's the maximum. That's the, that's the best way to use that machine. And then when you add the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, then the marginal product is decreasing. So the question is, I can't buy another machine because this is short run. But if I'm able to do that, that means we move to the long run so we can't change everything. So we can't change all, all inputs. And this is what we can look at next lecture. So this lecture, we're just looking at the short run. In the short run, you can change only the number of workers you hire, but not, not the number of machines you have or capital. So you, capital is fixed, labor is, is variable. Okay, that's very important. As I said, everything we'll say today, the next lecture, will depend on your understanding of the difference between the short run and the long run. Okay? So, what happened to the marginal, marginal product? So, it, it, it initially increases and then it decreases. What happened to the average? It decreases. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, I know you. I understand. Okay, so let's see this. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna show you now is the same this this table, the same example, but using the uh, graphs. So I'm gonna draw the, the the curves. So looking at the total product, that's how it looks like. So if we have, just notice that we have labor on the horizontal axis. That is the input that I can't change. Okay, we don't have capital. We can't change capital. Okay, and then the output on the vertical axis. If you have zero labor, that's point A, so you have zero output, and, and so on. If you have one, one worker here, that means you have four outputs, four units of output. That's a total output, and, and so on. So that show you the total uh, 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 product curve. <coughs> and also, it tells you what we can and what we can't produce given the technology we have, yes. Oh, you mean the, the, the total product? Well, well, the marginal product, it, it, that's a good question. Theoretically, yes, but does this happen in real life that somebody will produce negative if they distract others? So they, I don't know, they rather than they working, so they just wasting time. They don't, they do nothing. Maybe could be, yeah. So let's let this is the total product. So I go to the marginal product. I'll show you the, uh, show you point, you, you, the point you just raised now. Okay. So again, this is the total product, as I said. So let's look at the marginal product. The marginal product is the the change in the total product. Okay. So I'll show you first on the on the same curve. 
that is the contribution the first pro, uh, the first worker yeah so that's his marginal product okay then when we add one more that's what they contributed so that so now the marginal product increases from this to this okay and then that's initially so it increases initially and then now it's decreasing you see that is smaller than this one and then it's decreasing even even more so it decreases so it increases initially and then decreases at the end so <coughs> sorry so if we if we want to do this let's just do it on a separate uh, graph so that's how it looks like so if you connect these together then that is how the marginal uh, product looks like and your question is is this could be extended to be negative that's why you ask it now yeah so as I said I like in theory yes we could but does it happen in, in reality or not? Do, would you have somebody who's not contributing at all to the production and, and also distracting others? So his contribution is not even just zero. So this point here would just come here, intersect, just cross this, uh, this line. Okay? Your point is that it's even going to, to be negative. Yes, it could be. Okay? So the way to think of that, as I said, you have this number six or seven workers on that machine that should have only three and this number six is just not even just watching there so to produce zero to contribute zero he's actually making fun with others making jokes he's distracting everyone and then the actually his he's actually producing negative or he his contribution is negative to the output it could be so yeah, you see that's 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 how would uh, think of that uh, that care that way uh, thank you for the question by the way that's that's a really good point okay um so that's the this the how the marginal uh product looked like and as i said it increases initially and then it decreases and when because it's this is how it would look like in 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 most cases um probably in, 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 uh, in all cases, then we have the law of diminishing return because of the diminishing marginal uh, uh, product, because of this. So it's initially increase and then it diminish or it decrease afterwards. And as I said, because the workers will have less access to that machine. Remember all the machine that should have three, but you added fourth, fifth, sixth. So the more workers you add to this machine, and then the contribution is going to be less and less. Okay, and that's why we have the law of diminishing uh, returns that that explain uh, what we have. So again, this is something applies to the short run. This something happened in the short run. Why? Why we have this the law of diminishing return? We talk about the short run now because in the long run you can just buy another machine. Yeah, if you want to hire six workers, then you could actually have another machine and then that you can change both now so you can change labor and capital uh, as well so but for the for the short run so as i say as a firm uses more of a variable input with given quantity of fixed inputs which will happen only in the short run the marginal product of the variable input which in our case here is labor eventually diminishes or decreases okay that that's what it what it means okay what about the average product? We said, again, we start with the output. Okay? We started with the output. Okay? okay. So, next, we move to the, 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 the cost. But first, when we look at the output, we said we have three concepts to look at. Total product, marginal product, and average product. So, I show you the total and the, the marginal. Here is the average. So, what we have here, you see average product is very important uh, very interesting to, to to see how they are related together the marginal and the average product so when the uh, when the marginal product is above the average product you see all this area the marginal product is above the average product okay in that case average product would be increasing 
So as long as the marginal product is more, is above the average, then the average itself is increasing. So it doesn't matter whether the marginal product is increasing or decreasing. So the idea here, as long as this red or the marginal red curve or the marginal product is above this, that means this one is increasing. What happened after? It decreases. So after this point, you see the average product decreases when the marginal product is below the average average product. So when it cuts the average product at the maximum point. So the marginal product cuts the average product when the average product curve is at the maximum point. So you see that should be the maximum point on the average product curve. Okay, again, so the relationship between these two. So the as long as the average pro, uh, the marginal product above the average product, then the average product itself is increasing. Once the average product, so the marginal product cut the average product curve when the average product is at maximum point here. And then after that, then the average product is decreasing and the marginal product, as you see, will be below the average uh, product. So that is the, this is the, this is the output side. Okay. Remember, we're still talking about the short, the short run. We didn't, we're not going to talk about long run today at all. Okay. So now let's move to the short, uh, to the, to the short run course. We look at the output and we hopefully we understand now the two, the three concepts, total product, marginal product and average, average product. So moving to the cost in the, in the, in the short run, we need to understand three types of costs as well or three concepts. The total costs, okay, marginal costs and average costs. Okay. So, just see the similarity. So we looked at the total product, marginal product, average product. That's in the output side. In the cost side, we're looking at total cost, marginal cost, average cost. Okay? So with the total cost, this is the cost of all resources used. So what we mean by all resources, both fixed and variable. So remember, we we're talking about short run. So in the short run, we have variable inputs and fixed inputs. We have labor that we can change and capital that we cannot change. That is in the short run. So then the, when we talk about the total cost, we mean actually the cost of both of fixed and variable inputs. So that's why the total cost is the cost of all resources. All here means that both fixed and and variable. And that's why we could, from there, we could actually split this total cost into two components. The total fixed cost, so this is the cost of capital, the input that we can't change. Okay, that's the cost of capital in this case. And the total variable cost, so then what is the total variable cost? Is the cost of how much you pay for your worker now it like the, the how it depends how many how many you will you will employ so the difference here why the fixed cost is fixed because it's not going to be uh, it's not going to change when you change the output level so if you increase if you if you produce nothing you you bought a machine you start up your business so you, you 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 spend this investment already you spend this money to buy this capital you've got this capital now you started with like a plant you have production line everything but you got no you produce nothing. You already paid for it. So that is a fixed cost. Then you use this production line to produce five units of output. Well, the fixed cost is not going to change because you didn't buy a new machine. You didn't buy, you didn't build an, up a new production line. So the fixed is fixed. So it does not change when you change the output level. But with the variable cost, if I want to produce more, Remember the total product increases when you hire more workers. So if I want to produce more, so then I need to hire more and then that means the variable cost will change. So the variable cost change when you change the output. So when you want to produce more, then you need to hire more workers, then the variable cost will change. 
Okay? Remember, we have this variable cost and fixed cost because we're looking at the short run. Because we have fixed inputs and variable inputs. Capital and labor. Okay? So the total cost is the sum of these two. So the total cost is the sum of the total variable, uh, total fixed cost plus the total variable cost. Okay? So we understand now, the total cost is the cost of all resources, fixed and variable. So what is the total uh, uh, fixed, or wh why we have fixed cost? This kind of cost that it doesn't change when you change the output. That's why it is fixed. Okay? Because you're not going to buy a new machine. You're not going to pay for a new machine. Even if you produce more, even if you produce nothing. You get, you've got the machine, you pay for it, you already pay for this fixed cost. So it's not going to change if you change output. Okay? With variable cost, then this will change with output. So if you increase output, then you hire more labor, then you pay more for wages, and then that will affect the variable cost. So the total cost is the sum of these two. Okay? So let's see how this looks like. So just notice in the horizontal axis what we have here, what we measure, output. Okay? Let me just take you back very quickly, just to show you. Don't want you to get lost in these graphs. So in total product or in, in, on the product side, what we have on the horizontal axis, we have labor, and on the vertical axis we have the output. But in the case when we have costs, we have output in the horizontal axis, you see, and costs on the vertical axis. So by the way, in, in, in the exam, in the assignment, you need to label the axis very, very accurately. So you need to, you need to notice these things. Okay? So we have output in the horizontal axis and the cost on the vertical axis. So, how does the to total fixed cost look like? It doesn't change when you change output. So, if output equals zero, so you've, you produce nothing, that's the total fixed cost. If you produce five, well, it's the same. If you produce 10, it's the same. If you produce 15 units, it's the same. So, that's why it is fixed. It doesn't change when you change output. So that's why you have it horizontal line. So it's, it's just, uh, this it doesn't change. It is not affected by the output. Okay? That's why it is fixed cost. So that is the total fixed cost. What about the variable cost? So the variable cost, you produce nothing. You don't need any labor, so you didn't hire anyone. Then what is the cost in that case? would be zero. You didn't pay any wages, you, you didn't hire anyone, so you produce nothing. Okay? So that's zero. So that's why you start from, this cannot start from the origin point. So this, the total fixed cost doesn't start from zero, because that's something you already paid, and it is, it is fixed. So that's why above zero here. But the total variable cost, well, you could make a decision to, well, to not produce anything. So if you produce nothing, then... The, 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 the total variable cost is zero because I didn't hire any, any workers, I didn't employ anyone. So I didn't pay any wages, so the total variable cost is, is zero. But then when you, if you want to produce more, so if you want to move this way on, the, on this side, so from the right side to move this way to produce more, then I need to hire more. So what will happen to the total variable cost? It will increase because you pay more for wages. for this. So that's why the total variable cost is increasing. Remember the total variable cost, this is the cost for the variable input. In our example is labor. Okay? What about the total cost? Remember? The total cost is the sum of these two. So it's the cost of all resources we used, fixed and variable. So we should expect the total cost curve to be above these two. So they can't start from zero. So total cost, which is the sum of these two, it can start from zero. It's, it's the minimum is here, you see? If you pay nothing for workers, if you hire nothing, if you produce nothing, then the minimum will be the fixed cost. That is, will be the level for the total cost.
and then as you produce more, the total cost is increasing. And if you notice the difference between this curve and this curve is exactly the vertical distance here. So this one should be is exactly the difference between these two. The difference between the total cost and the total variable cost is the total fixed cost. Okay? Is this clear? Okay, so these are the uh, total costs. So as I said, you, we look at the total cost, the marginal cost, and the average cost. So these are the three concepts. Remember, on the output side, we looked at the total product, marginal product, average product. Here in the cost, and both we're looking at the short run, just to remind you. So here we're looking at the total cost. We already looked at the total cost. We need to cover the average cost and the marginal cost. So with the average, uh, um, the, the first, let just show you the, the, um, how the average variable cost. Sorry, I sh think it's just one of the slides. Yeah, so th that's the um, total variable cost. I think it was, come, yeah, the Africa cost is coming later. So I thought I just missed one of the slides. No, it's, it's here. So we, we move from the total cost to the marginal cost. The marginal cost, as I said, this is the contribution or this is the, the, the cost, the increase in the total cost when you increase the output by one unit. Okay, and what happened with the uh, uh, marginal cost? Well, let's see, let's see it on the graph is, is better. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. Yeah. Let's see it here. Now that we'll start with the average cost. So now the average cost, we could split the average cost in the same way. So we have the average, uh, uh, the, the, the average fixed cost and the average variable cost. So let's just go back to the total cost when we looked at the total cost i just put these didn't put them in the in the right order so i just expected to put the average variable the average cost uh, uh curve first but anyway so if we look at the total cost we split the total cost into total fixed cost and total variable cost okay we could do the same with the average cost so the average cost we have the average fixed cost and the average variable cost and the average total cost should be the sum of these two. So how we calculate the average fixed cost? You divide the total fixed cost by the uh, uh, quantity or the output. So let me give you an example. If you produce, um, if, you, if you buy a machine, that's a fixed cost, and that machine costs you 100 pounds, okay? And you use that machine to produce 20 units of this, whatever this is. So 20 units of output. So on average, so that's the, the cost per unit now of output. How much is the fixed cost now of uh, or per unit of output? So you have 100, that's the 100 pounds you pay for machine, you produce 20 units. So 100 divided by 20, that gives us 5. Okay, so that's the average fixed cost. So the more you produce, what do you expect that the average fixed cost? Would be less. So let's, let's think of, what about if, if I produce, rather than 20, if I produce 50? 2, so it's 100 over 50, that gives us 2. So the average fixed cost will be decreasing when you increase the output. The average variable cost, how we calculate the average variable cost? So it's the total variable cost divided by the output. The total divided by the output. Okay? So always we look at the, the average here, so it's the total divided by the output. So the total, uh, the average fixed cost, so that total fixed cost divided by the output. The, if I'm talking, I'm looking about the, looking at the average variable cost, the total variable cost divided by the output. Okay? And of course, the average total cost is both together. It's the sum of the average fixed cost and the average variable, variable cost. So, as I said, the average fixed cost will be decreasing when you increase the output. 
So remember, the fixed cost is 100 pounds in our example. We produce 20 units. So the average fixed cost is 100 by 20. That's five. Then if you produce more, if I produce 50 units, then what is the fixed cost? Is 100 is the same. So 100 by 50, that's two. So the more you produce, then the less you will have or the, 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 the average fixed cost will decrease. That's why we have this curve is decreasing. The more output you have, you see the average fixed cost is, is decreasing. What about the average variable cost? The average variable cost is like U shape. So you see it's decreasing first and then it comes to a minimum point and then it starts to increase. So the more you produce, then the average variable cost decreases first and then reach a minimum and then it increases again. So it looks like a U shape curve. So what about the um, yeah, the average total uh, cost? So it's the sum of these two. Sorry, just so these two. The average total cost, this blue curve here, is the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. Let me just show you this in the equation. That's what we show here. So the average total cost is the sum of the average fixed cost and the average variable cost. So that curve, what you saw now, this blue one, is just the sum of these two. This one plus this one. So the average total cost above these two. Okay, the last one is the marginal cost. The marginal cost is very uh, interesting curve as well because what we see here, the marginal cost curve will cut these two, the average variable cost, when the average variable cost as at minimum point, the same thing with the average total cost. So at this point, we're looking at the average variable cost. You see, it cuts here, the, this. So before that, is decreasing and then this is the minimum point and the average variable cost and then it starts increasing that's where the marginal cost cuts the average variable cost the same happen with the average total cost so if you look at the average total cost here you will see the same thing so the the marginal cost cut the average total cost from the minimum at the minimum point on the average total cost. Just to summarize this point, the marginal cost cut these two curves from where they are at the, in the bottom or at the bottom. So this is the minimum point. So the, the, the minimum point on the average variable cost you'll see is here. And that's the minimum point on the average total cost. Okay? And that's the interesting thing about the, the, the marginal cost curve. So <coughs> before I just move on to the next point and conclude for this lecture so again we looked today at the short run so we didn't we didn't look at anything related to the long run so what's the difference between the short run and the long run we have fixed inputs and variable inputs fixed inputs like capital something that we can't change in the short run uh, variable inputs like labor something that we can decide in the short run to have more workers or less we looked at two things two sides the cost uh, the output and the costs. With the output, we looked at three, three concepts. Total product, average product, and marginal product. Okay? With the cost, we looked at the same, very similar three concepts as well. So we looked at the total cost, marginal cost, and average cost. So the total cost is two parts because we have fixed and variable inputs. So it's we look at the, the, the variable cost and the fixed cost. So the total cost is the sum of these. When you look at the average, we also looked at these the two components, the variable and the fixed. So what you see now in front of you, these are the curves for the average cost and the marginal costs. So the important thing to notice here is how the average fixed cost decreases when you increase output, how the both these of these, the average variable cost and the average total cost are U-shaped curves. So they take this U-shape. And the last thing is how the marginal cost cut these two where they are at 
the minimum points. So here, this is the minimum point on the average variable calls, and this should be the minimum point on the average total calls. So that's almost everything we say today. Yeah. Okay, so why why we have the the cost first decrease on average and then it decreases, yeah? Yeah, it decreases first because when you when you produce more, so that means you're more specialized, so you can make some more saving, but at some point then it it increases. So you see? So that just imagine if you if you have like a a, a pizza restaurant and you buy some like ingredients and then you just you sell one one pizza okay like then you you produce two and three so probably when you produce more then you're making some saving now because you're buying ingredients for four five hundred pizza and then at some point this will increase the cost will will, will go up but here the cost is an average Okay, this is the average cost. What we're looking at here is the average cost. So an average, how much this? So if you buy ingredients for one, two pizzas, not like when you buy for 20 pizzas. Okay, you might make some savings where on average these are declining or de decreasing. But at some point, when you, if you produce more than these 20, then you, your cost on average will start to increase again. Okay, so that's why it takes this kind of uh, U-shape. So the, the interesting point is that how the marginal uh, cost curve cut this, this curve, the average one, when the average one is uh, at, the, at the minimum point. Okay, so as I said now, we, we looked at the output and the cost. We looked at the total product, marginal product, average product, and with the cost, we looked at the total uh, cost, uh, average cost, and and marginal marginal cost and what we see now is the average and marginal cost uh, uh, curves okay any question okay this is the last thing we we cover today so it show you the similarities between the output and the cost remember this is the marginal what you see here is the marginal product that's what we cover in the first half of the lecture. Okay, the output side. And this is the marginal cost curve. So you see how this is like going first, going up and then down, and this going the opposite way. So you see this, it first decreases and then increases. This one is increasing and then decreases. So it, it show you the relationship between these two. And then when you look at the average product remember the marginal product cuts the average product when the average product at maximum point so you see at that point so remember when we said when the maximum sorry when the marginal product is above the average product the ab average product is increasing and then when it cuts this when the average product is at the maximum point so if you compare this with the cost you will see how the marginal cost cuts the average cost when the average cost is the, at, the, at the minimum point. So here, that is the minimum point, that is the maximum point. So that's the maximum point uh, on the average product, that is the minimum point on the average cost. So it shows you the, the compare between these two, the, 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 the product or the output side and the cost side. So do you, do you notice the, the, how similar this is? Okay, if we carry on that will show you the different level so it, it says exactly what I said now so how at this point you will see the marginal product is above the average product but here the marginal cost is below the average cost when you look at this this is the maximum point on the average product this is the mini minimum point on the average cost okay is this clear okay so that's what we uh, we wanted to cover today. As I said, we we looked at the um, in the short run. Basically, we looked at the product side, and then we looked at the uh, cost side. Um, do you have any any question? <laughs>